medicines and food. Now, do you think we need a doctor for any of that? Thoughts and emotions are our business, and food is our business. That's a, by the way, this is the importance of food. When we eat food, hormones change, no matter what that food is, for better or worse. When we think a thought, our hormones change, no matter what those thoughts are, for better or worse. Likewise, with emotions. Thoughts and emotions and food are the main control points for our hormones. This is such good news for those of us looking to emancipate, to free ourselves from the tyranny of the medical model. If hormones are the initiators and nothing happens in the body without their initiation, without their inspiration, and if we control these hormones with our mental and emotional natures and with our foods, that means we have tremendous control over what happens in our bodies. No doctor required. No medical model required. No Obamacare required. No diagnostics required. No pharmacist been required. Thoughts and emotions and food. And when I talk about food, I'm talking about nutrition. And I'm also talking about, to a certain extent, oxygen. Yes, I know oxygen's not food, but it represents something that's coming into the body that nourishes us. Between thoughts and emotions and food and oxygen, you got your control points for hormones. And because hormones regulate every single function in the body, you have your control points for regulation of everything. Thoughts, food, thoughts, emotions, food, and oxygen. Now, you got two classes of your endocrine hormones. You get your water ones. That's insulin, thyroid hormone, adrenaline. They call them peptides. The types of small proteins or amino acids. I'm not going to talk about those for now because the ones that I'm so excited about are the steroid hormones. Those are the fatty hormones. Those are the ones we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. The fatty hormones are your stress management hormones. The fatty hormones are our growth and repair and fertility hormones. And when I say fatty hormones, I'm talking steroid hormones. And, oh, by the way, these fatty hormones that are so important, your stress management hormones, your growth and repair and fertility hormones, these fatty hormones, these endocrine, uh, steroid endocrine hormones, they're all derived, they're all types of cholesterol. I know I've said that before, but it bears repeating. Cholesterol is, uh, gets tweaked very slightly and becomes your steroid hormones. That makes cholesterol ridiculously important. If hormones are important and they all come from cholesterol, what does that tell you about cholesterol? What does that tell you about the absolute mentally incompetent, intellectually bankrupt, biochemically, biochemically ignorant strategy of turning off cholesterol production? Your endocrine, steroid endocrine hormones, your stress hormones, your growth and repair and fertility hormones, they're types of cholesterol. Do you think you ever want to shut down cholesterol production? Any medical professional who thinks that's a good strategy is the quintessence, the very definition of a bonehead, at least a biochemical bonehead. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're coming back with more... Back on the right side, I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. And both of, uh, both of these pages have search engines on them. If you miss a program, you can review it. Or if you have a specific topic that you're interested in, you can hit the you can head over to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. Just punch in whatever you want to punch in the search engine. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that one up. You can also check out my blog, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. We update both regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for those. And you can, of course, purchase the Longevity products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue talking about the steroid hormones. The cholesterol hormones. We should really call the steroid hormones the cholesterol hormones. If we called them the cholesterol hormones, we'd have a lot more respect for cholesterol. And we would certainly think twice about dumbing down cholesterol production. For you guys who are new listeners, and I know we get new listeners every day on this program, the number one reason why cholesterol, the main reason, pretty much the only reason why cholesterol levels go up is because of sugar. Cholesterol is a building substance. Sugar tells the body to build. Cholesterol goes up. It's not a reason. Elevated cholesterol is not a reason to shut down, i.e. poison cholesterol production. It's a reason to reduce your intake of sugar and to lower your insulin. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about the cholesterol hormones. And we'll talk about a super important nutritional supplement that you can take, that you can use to help protect and help 
help us support the production of these cholesterol hormones. We'll do that tomorrow as we continue talking steroid hormones and the skin on the bright side. All right, I'm Pharmacy Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Oregon and say hello to my friend, Carl the Truth Raider. What is up, Carl? Greetings, buddy. Oh, welcome back, Ben. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, this, this segues perfectly, and actually i got two subjects to speak about. This segues perfectly into the topic that I wanted to discuss with you. It's uh-huh. called andropause. Oh, as opposed to menopause. As opposed to menopause. That's, that's male menopause, Andrew. Yeah, that, that's the male. Okay. And, of course, the women suffers from, from their menopause. That's for females. Yes. That's kind of confusing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 you have to break down what the Greek translation or the Latin translation. Uh, Meno for moon for actually meno. means the pause of your menstrual cycle or of a woman's okay. menstrual cycle. Right, right. And andro has to do with androgen. Correct. So what's so, up? How can I help you, Carl, the truth? This is my, my, my theory that's going into why this phenomenon, why there's an increase. And say, for example, men who have uh, difficulties and struggle and have depression and have midlife crises. Okay. You know, related to andropause. Yes. Well, this is the two-year anniversary, just a little over the two-year anniversary since, uh, you know, the tragedy that I had here in Oregon. We had a, a person who was um, our director of our tennis um, programs here, a very stable person. All of a sudden, he, he personally had some difficulties, but couldn't quite pinpoint what it was, what it was but it's, it's possibly because it, it could have been andropause or something that was occurring in his life, and he couldn't handle it, and he tragically decided to commit suicide. Oh, that's terrible. Now, t- yeah. Tell me how I can help you, my friend. Well, we're in between your 50s to 60s. This is a dangerous point here. Uh, and men out there need to, you know, take heed and, and listen to this and make sure they keep their nutrition as high as they possibly can and take every type of nutrition that's available, supplement that they need to take in order to keep from getting these feelings of, uh, like, man, uh, mania or feelings of despair or panic due to these changes that, that, that occur between the right. 50s to 60s. So you can touch upon that, what, what the best thing yeah. is. Yeah, let me talk about a couple of things. That's, thank you. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up because we are talking about hormones. Certainly. appreciate it, Carl, the truth writer. I'm going to let you go here, buddy. Thank you for bringing that up, though, Carl. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing about andropause. And it's a, it is, as Carl says, it's a, it's a pretty scary time for guys. All of a sudden, our maleness goes away. Well, guess what? Uh, the antagonistic hormone to testosterone, male hormone, is estrogen. And the fastest way to bump up your estrogen and, at the same time, reduce the, the benefits or the, the effects of male hormones is to carry body fat. Female hormone is made in body fat, whether you're a man or a woman. The more body fat a man carries, the, uh, the more estrogen effects he's going to have and the less male testosterone effects he's going to have. So if you're a guy and you're dealing with a decrease in sexual performance or you're dealing with a problem with muscle building or you're feeling weak or you're losing your edge, so to speak, your mental or emotional edge at the age of 45 to 55, right around in that period, chances are pretty good that you're dealing with this andropause issue and chances are pretty good that you're dealing with with too much estrogen effects and not enough or female hormone effects and not enough male hormone effects. So the first thing you want to do is start to drop your body fat. When you reduce body fat, or even better, when you replace body fat with muscle, testosterone or male hormone benefits, male hormone effects will begin to accrue, and the female hormone effects will begin to drop down. It's kind of ironic what happens to men and women as we reach middle age, uh, between 45 and 55, men start to become more feminized. That's because they're carrying body fat, and also sugar, by the way, has an antagonistic connection to testosterone, or too much sugar, too much insulin, I should say, has an antagonistic effect on testosterone. As we get older and we, we start to deal with problems with insulin resistance, which is associated with too much insulin, as we begin to deal with problems associated with carrying too much body fat, our maleness starts to go away. Conversely, with women, the opposite happens. As women get older, their female hormones start to drop, and they become more masculinized. How ironic is that? As we get older, men become more feminized and women become more masculinized. If you want to reverse that, you've got to start dealing with your hormones. You've got to start dealing with your endocrine hormones, your cholesterol hormones, your steroid hormones. For men, that means losing body fat and starting to build muscle and using nutrition that helps you handle sugar as well. Zinc is one of the superstar hormone minerals for male hormones for testosterone. It's 
involved with acne, it's involved with muscle building, and it's involved with sugar metabolism. All men, first of all, everybody should be supplementing, supplementing with 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate, in my humble opinion, but especially men who are between the ages of 45 and 55 who are dealing with andropause. Secondly, reduce your intake of sugar and use nutrients that help your body handle sugar. Chromium and vanadium. Get on the sweeties. Magnesium. Selenium. Sulfur. Alpha lipoic acid. And, of course, your B vitamins. All extremely important for helping the body handle sugar. That means the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And that means your sweeties. And that means, of course, the entire Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. For women, the opposite. Uh, yeah, women have the opposite problem. Women are going to start to need to balance out, uh, balance out female hormones and male hormones by using things like progesterone cream or even pregnenolone. Tomorrow we'll talk about essential fatty acids. Those can be very helpful as well. And don't underestimate the importance of zinc picolinate for women. Magnesium can also be helpful for uh, menopausal issues. We're going to talk about menopause. We'll, uh, we'll probably end up talking about andropause as well. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So, uh, Long story short, Carl, lose body fat, replace body fat with muscle, use nutrients that help you handle sugar, uh, especially zinc, which has double duty as a hormone, uh, as a hormone helping mineral and also a sugar metabolizing or a sh uh, insulin supporting mineral as well. And then all the other ones, chromium, vanadium, your ultimate selenium, more protein, get your butt in the gym. You actually don't even need to go to the gym. You know, you could do resistance training with a big old rubber band tied to your couch or, or your desk or a big piece of furniture and just do leg lifts or arm raises or you can use one of those uh, those big old rubber bands that have two handles on them and you could do curls with that. You can do it while you're watching TV. You don't need a membership to the gym to build muscle, but building muscle is a great way to reverse the effects of andropause. All right, thanks for your call, Carl. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, questions about hormone health, or if you have questions about skin care, skin health, we're here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Alabama and welcome to the bright side. Is that how you say that? Did I say that right? I like that. C H. This is C H. C H. Is that it? Just C H or is it? Ch? It's C H. Oh, okay. How's it going, C H? What's going on today? Fine. How are you? I always I'm calling today because I don't have the internet, and I I hear you speak on skincare a lot. Yes. But I've never paid close attention about when you talk about dry skin. Okay. Can you please talk about dry skin yes. and, how to, and how to find my way out of it. Okay, good. You know, first of all, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. I've been doing skin, uh, you may not know this, but I've been in the skin health business since 1983. I started working for the Blistex Corporation as a student. I actually worked for the guy who invented Blistex. He was a professor at the University of Colorado in, in, uh, in Boulder. One day I was walking through the basement of the School of Pharmacy and I smelled this little pepperminty smell coming out of one of the rooms. And I walked into the room and there was this little old man tinkering around some beakers. And we started chatting. And next thing I knew, I was Dr. Jones' research assistant. And for the next three and a half years, years while my colleagues were off getting their internship hours. Pharmacists, pharmacy students need to get internship hours to become pharmacists. And while my uh, fellow students were getting their internship hours in various drugstores in, in Boulder and Denver, I was getting my internship hours in the Blistex lab, learning everything you could possibly want to know about skin and skin health and lips and ingredients and how you formulate products. My job was literally to make Dr. Jones's formulas. I'd come in after school and there'd be a stack of formulas that Dr. Jones would type up. This was in the pre-computer days and he would be typing up formulas and I have a stack of them and I would have to make them and I learned a lot about the skin and, uh, and since then I've been a, a, a lover, a fan, a connoisseur of good skin and good skin products. I know a lot about the skin and when, and when I do my talks about doing my talks about skin, I'll always ask people about dry skin. I'll say, how many of you guys have dry skin? And invariably everybody raises their hands. Pretty much everybody has dry skin, CH, everybody. But here's the great irony. Nobody's supposed to have dry skin because the skin has moisture factors built into it that keep the skin from being dry. Human beings arose out of the ocean millions of years ago and we evolved mechanisms, our skin evolved mechanisms for keeping the water in. So skin is not supposed to be dry and it always represents a bio
biochemical mishap. It represents disease. It represents a health issue. It is not a moisturizer problem. And oh, what's even worse, the more moisturizer you use, the drier your skin will be. That's because when you put a moisturizer on, a typical wax and oil and, and emulsifier and, and a silicon a mo- a moisturizer, 